Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Royce. Welcome back to A Drink With Crazy. And we're back for reading your comments, number three. Um, it, the most epically named segment on YouTube ever. This, this is the best name. You can't get better than reading your comments. You can't. That is the ultimate name. Just like I am the ultimate dumbass. Anyway, let's get into what beer I'm drinking today. Today's beer is coffee. Oh, good old-fashioned coffee. Anybody tells you that's not beer is a lie. They, they are a lie. They, they don't understand. They, they, don't, they don't get it. Um, no, truthfully, guys, it's before noon, and I have made it a goal in my life that I don't start doing alcoholic beverages before noon. Um, and, yeah, that's just, I don't, I don't want to go down that slippery rabbit hole. I mean, I already probably drink way too much anyway, so... Yeah, and then I, you know, I also don't drink hard alcohol, so you'll never see me do, like, whiskey on stream, um, and the reason that I do beer is because I don't do any sort of uh, sugary drinks, no Gatorades, no sodas, no energy drinks, well, the energy drinks I will do rarely, and that's usually when I'm driving, um, but yeah, so if you guys ever request, like, hey, have you tried this whiskey, or do you try to do vodka, no, like, I do beer because... Basically, beer, it works on me slow enough that uh, when I start to feel it, I just stop and cut myself off because I don't need to be that guy. Um, I like the flavor of beer. I like drinking it. Don't have a whole lot of fun drinks in my life anymore. And so that's it. So today's beer is coffee. Now, let's get to reading your comments. Starting all the way back at the last reading your comments video, which was reading your comments, number two. And I see the thumbnail has my black horse hat, which I need to find that. I, I took it out. All right. I am. Says, LOL, you read my comment. Your hands down becoming my favorite channel. Well, thank you, I am. I, I appreciate it. I I absolutely love that people are, are digging this and getting inspired by this. And there is a fly down here. All right. Uh, Eric Hare, the point of my comment on your Yaira video was to dispel some theories about Yaira and Isom having a past. Uh, them being exes, etc. Uh, it was not commenting about uh, which accepts it appears Isom has uh, confrontations with in Isom number one. It appears he may have confrontations with both Alpha Core and Yaira, if not Santuan. Uh, as well, based off of the uh, cover art on covers B and C. And the story summary on the campaign website clearly showing Isom and Santuan have a hostile past. It also directly says the Alpha Core and Yaira have their own set of conflicts in the story summary, as well as separate from Isom and Santuan. Yeah, no, Eric Hare, I think that you're probably right. And he was commenting back on... Oh, was that the first theory crafting? No, it was the Yaira. He said it was the Yaira video. So yeah, that was the Yaira theory crafting, which um, to my surprise, actually, the Alpha Core theory crafting did way better than that. Um, Sunny Kim, I feel you. Four, lo uh, four Loco and the Steel Reserve stuff has so much sugar, it's undrinkable. If I want to suffer to get my buzz on, I'll get some 99 whatever shooters. Yeah, that drink last week was absolutely horrible. So hey, buddy, good morning. All right, go upstairs, dude. I'll be up there in a bit, okay? I just got to get this video done. <laughs> Love you, dude. Love you. Uh, yeah, no, that four loco last week. Oh my god, I told my wife I was like, baby, never, never again. That was that was. I actually, I didn't even finish it. I didn't even finish that thing. It was it was terrible. Oh, that stuff was god awful. Lucas Garrett <clears throat> comments. It says, "Thanks for the video shout outs, man. Much appreciated." Uh, as to your question about Professor Xavier, fun uh, how Professor Xavier funded his school, Xavier family has old money wealth, and his father, uh, Dr. Brian Xavier, was a nuclear researcher who worked uh, for the United States government during the Second World War. His father died from an accident soon after. I also suspect that Professor Xavier helped to fund S.H.I.E.L.D. in its early days before Nick Fury took over a uh, public director in the mid-1960s. He might have even uh, had held the positions of the program director of PSI division uh, before he founded his school. All speculation on my part. Uh, you can see how much I go into that theory in my Luke's uh, Speculations website from WordPress. Uh, I was back one second, guys. Hold on. I apologize. Uh, 
All right. So I'm going to attempt to get some some sound dampeners here because literally my setup is you go down in my basement and this is I'm literally in a corner in my basement. They like there's like this cutout kind of down here. Well, not cut out, but like there's extra room here. I what which I assume is for like when you're bringing couches down the stairs, you have enough room to turn and like, you know, it's designed very well and I took up that space. So there's no soundproofing. So I am constantly fighting the noise of the house. Um and I probably need to go uh, get a decibel meter and figure out like when certain doors are open, like what areas are the loudest. And uh, that way I can uh, dampen there too. So I'll try to, I got to get this somewhat tuned here. Um, anyway, all right, back to Lucas Garrett's. Uh, sorry about that. That was just, it was really, really hard because all I could hear was what my kids were watching. <laughs> Um, it was back, uh, when I was hyped for the Fantastic Four and X-Men coming to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I no longer hold these thoughts. Well, I got to go. Have a great week. And I did have a great week, Lucas Garrett. Thank you. Kyle Phillips, I understand energy down, uh, to the reasons. I understand what it means. Welcome to the age of Aquarius. Um, our intention while writing, uh, translates into your intention while speaking. We may as well intend, uh, the energy to travel through to you with no resistance. It's electricity and conversation of energy. Physics, uh, doesn't give a shit what you think. <laughs> it just works one way. So this is what I was saying. When you guys comment, it just, it just powers me up, man. I like, I become like a fucking anime character and like the power of friendship and, fucking makes me happy and shit I, I don't know i don't know i've been watching here my hero academia lately like it's a good show it is it's a good show uh so that garcia xenoverse legend uh not garcia 15 legend but yeah garcia xenoverse legend <laughs> um which is a dragon ball of uh, a video game reference here um he made a ton of comments here um i'm Okay, I'm going to read one of his. I won't be able to read all of his. This one's very long. All right, last comment. Good reason why it separated it uh, from my other comment. I know how it feels being passionate about something you love, especially towards movies. I'm more of a fan. Uh, I am more <clears throat> of a Jurassic Park fan. I actually like the uh, Jurassic World films, but am mixed on the last one. But as a Star Wars normie, as Ripa puts it, I've only seen the prequel trilogy as a kid. Love parts one and three. Well, I thought two was uh, boring. So I have seen the infamous sequel trilogy. Um, so coming from the casual normie perspective, I, for one, was very disappointed with how they handled uh, some of the characters, also their actors, that I genuinely liked for the most part from The Force Awakens, which was Finn and Kylo Ren, Finn and Kylo Ren who were wasted uh, slash mistreated after The Force Awakens. Uh, I I claim myself to be a fan of those characters, but nope. Whoever were their uh, were their writer slash staff. Um, uh, lost my place. Where they treated them mostly like products, then as human beings, especially towards John Boyega, the actor himself who played Finn. The Last Jedi was a disappointing mixed bag, and Rise of Skywalker was a diehard uh, was. As a diehard fan of films, movies in general, I was insulted. Okay, I see what you're saying there. So as a diehard uh, fan of films and movies in general, I was insulted by the story structure and how friggin' contrived it was. Sadly, I'd never seen the original Star Wars trilogy in its original format. Apparently, George Lucas CGI'd some unnecessary stuff, but I have seen the Family Guy Star Wars trilogy in which Palpatine was supposed to be dead. I don't need to be a diehard Star Wars fan to know that I've seen a poorly constructed movie that makes a viewer like me feel so stupid, and Jurassic World never made me feel so stupid. The writing is flat, but not severely stupid. Uh, from what I've seen, so I definitely feel sorry for those who are diehard Star Wars fans and <clears throat> uh, who are diehard Star Wars fans on how their favorite movies got tainted by modern Disney. For people like me, I felt mostly uh, betrayed, which stinks if you ask um, 
Yeah, if you ask me. Lastly, I strongly agree. We are the human race. Never thought about skin color until after or during high school. Like Ripa said, uh, for those who care way too much about skin colors, you are truly friggin' losers. Great response uh, video, despite the bad drink you had. And my apologies for making my second comment that is uh, more like an essay. <laughs> so I told him never to apologize um, for uh, uh, doing long comments. But yeah, uh, Garcia, Xenoverse legend, XV legend, thank you so much. Uh, I am going to probably skip a couple more of your comments that you had. Um, just because that one was very long and these videos already take up a ton of time, but thank you so much. Uh, Billy, uh, Billy Bobsack, I think Isom's power, um, is just super strength. I mean, there's a lot of people going back and forth on what his power set's going to be. I, mm, the more I think about it, I think Isom's power is going to be, why can't I think of his name? Um. Come on, come on, brain. Uh, nope, can't think of his name. I don't know. I think Isom's power is going to be one that scales um, to his opponent, potentially. Um, potentially, I'm not sure. I think it's. I think it is. It, whatever his power is, will scale to his opponent, like uh, Hyperion. Why can't I think of his name from Marvel comic books? Why do I always do this? All right, anyway, um, thank you, Billy Bob Sack. I love your name, by the way. Freight Train. You'd think a black guy making comic books would at least make all the women have big booties. That alone would have had me interested. Yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. But, no, seriously, though. Like, all the... Yeah, no. Mm-hmm. Yup. All right, this is a uh, Ripperverse Alpha Core Theory Crafting video. That was the one I did right after. In fact, I, I uploaded it that night. I thought this video was going to do terribly, and it did not do terribly. All right. Tim Allen, <clears throat> which I, I doubt it's the real Tim Allen. Oh, that would be baller. Oh, I would die. Mm, I would probably die. What I'm getting off of AlphaCore is perhaps they are like a federal agency that goes... After Rogue accepts, maybe the heroes had to sign something after some sort of um, horrific event, and the Alpha Corps is, is like accepts that are a part of the DOJ or DOD. Uh, the event that made Isom leave the hero business is what brought about the creation of the Alpha Corps. That is my theory. So I think a lot of people are definitely in my camp of like, nope, these 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 sons of bitches are are definitely like some version of. Um, uh, so, some version of Fed Boys. Like, the Alpha Corps, definitely some version of Fed Boys. They've got to be, right? Um, all right, this is a new video, so I will uh, read uh, I will read more comments. But Garcia, XV Legend, is back. Aside from himself and the hot babe Yaira, I am mostly definitely intrigued by the Alpha Corps since they give off some sort of unique vibe uh, from them. They could potentially be government-owned heroes to uh, judge uh, uh, slash fight off vigilantes like Isom. Uh, what I want to add is my thoughts on their design seems to be inspired by Superman and his villains. The aesthetic just screams General Zod and supers himself with a dash of Lex Luthor in terms of color because, uh, because that shade slash tone of green reminds me of Lex Luthor uh, in the action suit uh, in... Lex Luthor's in-action suit uh, wear. Uh, the other dude uh, with his helmet uh, must... The other dude with the helmet must potentially have been inspired by Red Hood's design, uh, but of course, to blend in with the other two comrades, plus he himself uh, must have gear slash tech so he can analyze data and spot weaknesses. Uh, gear from Static Shock uh, is like that if memory serves correctly, but of course Iron Man in that extent. That's my overall initial thoughts on these guys. Yeah, so the guy with the helmet, I think, is like the brains of the operation. I think he's going to be their uh, strategist and possibly like their status, their statistician. Um, I that's that's I I lean heavily into that uh, into that camp. So uh, based off of what is shown in the cover, in the cover art. Or, ah, I'm sorry. I did this wrong. I did this absolutely wrong. Eric Hare. 
All right. Eric Hare says, based off of what is shown in the cover art for cover B and uh, cover C, and what is said about the Alpha Core and Yaira having their own sets of conflicts, the story summary on the campaign website, it appears in the aftermath of Avery's meeting with Fontano, Isom runs afoul of either uh, of either the Alpha Core, Yaira, or both searching uh, for his friend. Uh, from his history of confrontations with San Juan, noted in the story summary on the campaign site, it seems he may have some issues with San Juan as well. I completely agree with you. The Alpha Corps appearing to be military funded uh, slash backed simply based off of the color of their attire. Also based off of what appears to be utility belt in the lady member of the Alpha Corps suit. I didn't pick up on the utility belt. I totally missed that and... That really makes me wonder what the hell her power set is. Cause so she's got the whips here. She's got the utility belt down here. So like she's going to be using the whips. She's going to be pulling stuff out of the utility belts. Like that's interesting. I totally missed that. Eric care. That was a fantastic, um, uh, comment. And you actually commented further back and forth with me in that thread, uh, which I, I need to go back and, um, kind of read some of that stuff. All right, the Alpha Core could be space emissaries, possibly to bring uh, back to some planet where he originally came from, or possibly to bring Isom back to some uh, planet where he originally came from. That is Resistance Publishing. I was thinking kind of like a, a Goku story there. Um, that's the vibe that I get from that. Um, I don't know if Eric is going to go off the bat with space emissaries. I think that that... That scales the universe so drastically off the start, and I believe he said he wanted to stay closer to street level, so. Yeah, so I'm not sure about that. I think that scales off the start. Damn, am I clipping this entire time? Probably. I've got to get my microphone stuff adjusted. Maybe I just pull it back for me a little bit. Hopefully that'll work. Eh, right there, yeah. Um, I'll be getting some foam and getting a decibel meter and trying to figure out where I can make some improvements to all this back here, so... I've got to. I got to do something. Um, all right. Mad Hatter. Finally, some fun fan theories to look forward to again. Thank you so much, Mad Hatter 1776. Thank you for checking it out. Um, okay. Who owed that? Spelled all kind of funky. He says, I see you, man. Being the first to do reviews of theories of Ripperverse, I hope uh, I hope this is successful and helps catapult you. Well, thank you so much. Um, who owed that? I, uh, who, I, or you're, oh, I see what you did. The, you did a, a smiley face thing. Oh, I get it now. Cause it's okay. Yeah. But thank you so much. Who dat? I appreciate you. Um, and man, if it catapults me, I, that's, it is what it is. Um, I just, I, regardless of what happens with this channel or anything, I know that I got to get up every day, put my boots on my feet and bust ass to provide for my family. And, um, if this turned into something where I could do that, yeah, I would absolutely bust ass. And the, the time that I would have to be able to actually turn like these segments into something really cool turn the normal segments into something really cool with the editing and stuff. If you guys want to see what I'm used to doing, check out the channel Runner Runner Airsoft on YouTube. That is the first channel that I ever really put time into. It's like four or five years old now. Um, and you can see, and I actually, I, I try to get out and play Airsoft as much as I can. I, I freaking, I love um, the, well, the firearms world and the airsoft world and all that. I actually just hung up the four rules of gun safety right here because we always need to be reminded of that. But go check out my Runner Runner Airsoft channel if you guys want to see the level of editing that I am used to doing. Um, basically running three cameras, coming back, audio, commentary, uh, sound effects, uh, overlays. So go check all that out. Um, um, if And that's, yeah, if, if this catapults me uh or catapults the channel i should say i would there there would be a lot that i would really like to do and get into i would have time to um like go onto the skillshare website and learn more editing and become more efficient with it and all that but we'll see man we'll see right now this is just something that i do at the end of my days to 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 calm down and to just 
to just chill, you know, and my wife has been so supportive and she's happy seeing me do this again. So, uh, thank you so much. Who dat. All right. Um, Evan writes, I agree that it is unlikely that Isom can fly. I also agree. The alpha core seems militaristic. Yeah. Them, they're, they're fed boys. They're, they're totally, they are totally fucking fed boys. Like that's, they've got to be right. Um, all right. Lucas Garrett. Once again, awesome video. Thank you so much, Lucas. You have literally been here since the first rip of video and like you haven't stopped. It, it, actually quite a few of you have. <laughs> Thank you. Um, thanks for making it. Well, I'm going to keep making more. Uh, my theory about Alpha Core is that they are artificially enhanced super soldiers who were probably chosen from the best of the best in the military. However, these soldiers uh, went full on with their abilities and are equivalent of General Zod and his two Kryptonian subordinates from Superman 2. I am definitely getting a similar vibe from the Alpha Core. I'm also su uh, surprised Eric July didn't call them the Alpha Core, like actually spelled C O R P S instead of C O R E. I totally i mean it, it was almost on the nose you know as with the yira speculation video we will have to wait and see once the issue is shipped and i can't wait yeah yeah yep yep i wanna it's gonna be fun to see how absolutely wrong i am on all of this <laughs> <laughs> Although I don't want us to be wrong on the alpha core cuz like a lot of us are like no they're military what if they're not what if they're like crazy like eco terrorists like did we ever even think about that like they wear green and you know like what, what just throwing that out there what if we are totally wrong and they're like the complete opposite of that and they like want to destroy the system i don't know i don't know that'd be funny Nightwish fan 1991. I definitely get the vibe that they are an except enforcement group. Maybe even military. Not villains, but ones you would not want to cross. I have a feeling Isom has had a run in with them in the past and is not uh and is not one that goes by the books in their eyes. They might even have had uh an agreement since Isom retired, they would leave him alone. Uh well now he's back on the streets, and the Alpha Corps might have to see. Uh, Alpha Core might see that as going back on his word. Uh, yeah, Nightwish uh, fan, 1991. I think that you are, you're probably the closest out of like most of us on that. Like, I think you are getting really dead on with that, with that theory. Definitely. Like, I, I'm pretty sure that's the conflict here. Um, I just want to know how Yaira ties in with him. Dead End, 4991. He's been here for a while too. Uh, you had the same thought I did with the military. See, that's what I mean. Everybody thinks these guys are fed boys. Um, after taking a second look, um, a after taking a second look as the cape of the, uh, as the cape on Lady Roids, I think the cape belongs to Mister Roids. I did, I didn't notice it at first until you moved on the uh, onto the comic book cover uh, for the tracksuit guy. I think um, he's some sort of comms guy uh now uh the dbs movie i love dragon ball but the trailer looked meh i hope it's good but it looks corny um yes uh i didn't notice the cape thing yes it's probably his cape um yeah yeah you're right there um tracksuit guy so everybody's leaning like he's their support guy right i mean he could still throw down but he's definitely you know um yeah, the Dragon Ball Super superheroes movie that I think Toriyama is going too far away from what he should be with his animation. I think he's trying to do too much 3D animation. And although 3D animation looks absolutely fantastic in like the world of Demon Slayer and all that, it just isn't. Um, it does not need to be overutilized in Dragon Ball Z. I think that there are certain moments when you absolutely use it, but I think uh, I think Toriyama's going a little too far. It just it looks like a Dragon Ball Super video game and not a Dragon Ball Super experience. Um, but I'm excited for it, and it comes out this month, so it's going to be fantastic. Church versus the world. He's been here since the first Ripperverse video, too. Great review. I'm wanting to do a theory craft soon. We'll get on it, Church versus the world. And if you've already done it, let me know in the comments, and I'll go check it out. I just, I don't have a ton of time to um, check out a bunch of stuff anymore and especially when i'm watching newer channels that i i i want to focus on and pay attention because a lot of times i'll put like rip on in the background or the geeks and gamers guys on in the background and gary from nerd on in the background and 
generally they have a lot of the same talking points that they do, which is a really good craft that people who master this understand is that is there, right? So in order to make this new point, I'm going to make this point that I've made a thousand times, but that way that people who are new to the channel understand what's going on. And then here's my new point, right? So I can half listen to the people who I've been listening to for a long time because I understand the architecture and the structure of what they're saying. And so when they go to make a new point, I can key into that moment. And then when they start to get back to talking about, you know, their old points or just some other stuff that's just circumstantial to the daily life, I can kind of tune out. But church versus the world, if you're going to do a theory craft, let me know. And that way I can actually sit down and focus on it and really, um, you know, and really, you know, pay attention to it. So get that theory craft out there. Billy Bob Sack is back again. She can't fly. In one of the images, we can see her holding on to Helmet Man's legs when he's flying. I think her and Royd Boy are siblings. Could be siblings. They they could be siblings. Um, that would, um, yeah, the first one with the arm around the shoulder. Uh, if she can't fly, I was always, oh, well, they're flying together. And she's got her arm around his shoulder. No, it could be a sibling thing. Absolutely. And, like, he's super strong and she's got the whip stuff. And maybe they do a tag team type of thing where he like throws her around and she'll do the whips and then he comes up and smashes some shit like that could be really cool like combo team fighting there there was also one where she she's down and dude's carrying her off in the panel i saw so they're all flying away and she's laid out so i i'm assuming that uh i some you know uh uh i some definitely believes in equality and you know because everybody's going to catch these hands i i think i some <laughs> let's go uh sunny kim i dig helmet bro he just puts off a, i don't give a fuck vibe yeah that's true that's true sunny kim he kind of does right he kind of does uh nathan shennery i uh i bet they are government sponsored superheroes mm -hmm. yeah uh jl um roid pair or twins i'll bet helmet guy is the brains of them probably a uh, secret bad guy too right right don't trust people who wear helmets don't trust people who wear helmets. Uh, 633, I think Waller controlled an agency called Cadmus, if I'm not mistaken. So, okay, so here's the thing. is because I couldn't remember. So, Waller, Cadmus was like a secret project that she was working on and trying to hide. But when she was in, like, like the government, um, she was in control of some agency. Cadmus was like a secret, like keep it down here type of project, but she was in control of an agency and that agency is where the suicide squad came from and worked for it. But I don't remember, like, I thought it was DOJ or DOD or something like that. I can't, um, yeah, Cadmus. No, she was tied to Cadmus, but that was a secret, like scientific, like experimental research, blah, blah, blah. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I, mm. So, no, you're right, and thank you, 11th Tribe. Sorry, I don't think I read your name, but thank you, 11th Tribe, for responding to that. Because um, that's what I wanted to say was Cadmus, but I I just can't remember, guys. I have so much information that goes through my head, and sometimes I fail. Most of the time I fail. That's that's what I do. All right, Deadass Joe Walsh and then the Steely Man. Uh, is this alternative reality, the critical drinker? Um. The fact that you are referring to me as an alt reality critical drinker, like that, I was like, even if he's just giving me shit, that's a huge compliment because the critical drinker is on a completely different level and he's so fantastic. So uh, thank you, deadass uh, Joe Walsh and the Steely Man. I appreciate it. Um, Church versus World again. Diggle was Spartan. Yes, I did read his. Uh, again, if you guys come at me with a really long one, and then come at me with another really long one in the same video. I'm probably not going to read more than one of your really long ones. Just so I can make sure I, I, I can have enough time to get to everybody else. Because I tried to... Because these videos already take like two and a half total hours to do. Between the recording, editing, rendering, and then uploading. Um, yeah, so... All right. Uh, Xavier Guzman, how do I DM you? Well, I did respond to you, Xavier. Um, we are on uh, Facebook. So you can find a drink with crazy on Facebook and you can also find us on Twitter at a drink with craze one. Um, yeah. So go to Twitter, follow us there. And if you guys want to DM me, uh, that would be great. Um, 
Also, hopefully, Xavier Guzman, hopefully you weren't that guy that was, like, spamming us on Facebook and Twitter that was like, I can help you with your uh, your SEO and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, dude, like, no, I'm not going to spend money on SEO for this. Like, I could, but I need to develop the channel before I start, like, this is a hobby right now. And I don't think that was you, Xavier. But, yeah, Xavier, if you want to DM me, hit me up on uh Hit me up on Twitter. Um, I'm the one that pretty much runs that. The other guys are there. Uh, Convoy Bebop, he was actually live streaming um, last night. Or, yeah, last night. And uh, he does a lot of the the super cuts of, like, our live streams and stuff. And he helps manage our Twitch and all that. So that's Convoy Bebop. And then Matt, he'll jump in once in a while and do uh, do some uh, two-person conversation videos. So, um, But I pretty much run the Twitter and the YouTube. And, well, this kind of whole thing was my brainchild. So that's kind of why I'm the point man here. But, yeah. Oh, all right. My God, you guys comment a lot and I, I don't know how to handle it. All right. We're going to go into isom theory crafting. I, this video didn't do as well as I thought it was going to do. I thought everybody was like excited. Nope. Nope. And like, and seriously, more people commented and were excited about the alpha core than they were Yaira and isom like almost combined. I think, I don't think Yaira and isom uh, uh, videos had as much interaction and viewership as the alpha core. I'd have to go like actually type the numbers, but it's like alpha core doubled them. Like it was crazy. All right. And this is, uh, <clears throat> the man Isom. Who is he? So Isom's theory crafting church versus the world. I have only seen one picture of Isom that makes it look like maybe he's flying. My theory is he is like Cage with strength and possibly bulletproof or some form of invulnerability. Church versus the world. I absolutely agree. I think invulnerability is going to be a huge part of Isom's uh, power set or if not invulnerability some some version of ridiculous resistance. Uh, Sunny Kim. I'm also not opposed to a self insert if done right. Eric works out and is all about bettering himself. So I could see Isom not being the strongest, but being able to get stronger the more he trains. My character idea is kind of a self-insert, but it's really more of the average Midwest guy, not specifically myself. Yeah, um, I think that could totally be Isom. Is like he has the ability to start out here and through training and maybe like a Goku thing, right? Um, you know, a Goku and Vegeta thing. Because, I mean, if you remember Dragon Ball Z, like, and I'll say Dragon Ball Z, I am, I, I watched Dragon Ball here and there, but that, and even then, like, that was small time power scaling. But if you remember where Dragon Ball Z started off and then where it ended, like, just a Dragon Ball Z, we won't even get into Super, but I could see Isom possibly doing something like that, you know? Um, I think that, I think that's hugely possible. Uh, Drew Crew, been thinking about that speed or some kind of burst explosion. Uh, he looks to be coming forward fast. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, that could be, yeah. Some, uh, not wrong. All right. Tim Allen back again. My theory of Isom is this. His powers are derived from the earth. Strength, uh, strength has skin as tough as uh, stone. The T on his uniform could uh, be for Terra. Uh, somebody also commented that uh, uh, um, it, it's an I actually, which... Either way, eh, it's a cool uniform. But anyway, uh, it could be for Terra, which is Earth. Uh, the closer he is, uh, the closer to the ground he is, the more attuned his powers are. He can run fast as an avalanche, can move down mountainside. I think the reason he gave up the hero business is because an innocent was either killed or permanently disabled in the battle. <clears throat> he was in uh, with real bad guy. Yeah, I know my thoughts are all over. Sorry about that. Just spitballing my ideas as they hit me. Tim Allen, never apologize for your thoughts being everywhere. Have you literally watched a video on this channel? <laughs> like, it's, I, I, I have such a hard time staying on one track. I like, I'll have a point and I'm going to circle that point and then eventually I'll get to it. But we've got to circle the, the never ending mind toilet first. Right? Like, we, we'll get there. But no, never apologize for your thoughts being all over the place. Uh, yeah, I think a lot of those are really good. I don't know about the connection to the ground. That seems to be a serious limitation. And that's one thing that we have never talked about. Like, uh, watching My Hero Academia uh, and understanding, like, like, they're very much like, oh, these characters have absolute, like, weaknesses in their powers. Like, 
uh, is that going to be something that's touched on or is there just going to be this kind of like in a battle and then somebody just reaches their limitation or like are we openly going to like realize like where somebody's power set is just not effective um i don't know uh uh Hiwa ruin i am not sure if i pronounced that correctly uh hwa uh r y u n uh i see i some having uh, enhanced physical abilities and extra power. Yeah, I think that that could be a thing. I think the uh, the enhanced abilities is probably a thing. Uh, Sunny Kim came back, and again, short comments will get read more. You know, long comments only get read once. Okay, Sunny Kim. Uh, Xeps could mean anything. They could be mutants. Uh, they could be gifted powers uh, from the gods. They could be handed some type of mantle. I think XX covers all of the above. Uh, it's just what norm uh, normies call people with powers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think you're right. Um, Hotep God Drelly. My theory is that he has super strength and uh, super Spider-Man agility. Uh, so he can run super fast using his strength in his legs. He can jump from building to building. Uh, like Midoriya from My Hero Academia. Also, he can easily learn to adopt different martial arts. And this was actually Hotep God Drelly. You are the reason I started watching My Hero Academia. Um, because I said that I'd never watched the show. And you said it's a very good superhero anime. And, um, um, you know, you'd like to see some talk about, uh, you know... Uh, uh, manga versus Western comic books and stuff like that. But yeah, no, uh, Hotep Godrelli. Thank you for, you were literally that little push over the edge. And now I'm, I'm really enjoying my hero academia. Um, it's, it's been fantastic. So thank you. Um, and also, yeah, I think, uh, you're probably, uh, you know, having super strength. Like a lot of people think of him as the punchy guy, but I mean, the application for super strength, um, like, the application there not a lot of people do very well and if you could do that man if it's done right the super strength has pardon my pun groundbreaking um consequences to it <laughs> god I, I couldn't avoid that one jerry adams hey is that official art? Because if it is, he has a blue uh, aura around his uh, sclera and pupil. Has a faint blue coloration as well. Uh, uh, is it just a stylistic art thing or a clue to his power or relation to Yaira? Question mark. So, um, I hit the contrast on this photo and just went crazy with it because it pops and, and, and visually uh, that actually really helps... Um, when you do thumbnails, if you do add a bit, a little bit of sharpness, a little bit of, uh, uh, contrast, you know, just to, you know, pop this one, I went, I went way too far. Uh, but, um, usually, so no. So all that blue there, that's probably just some light shading that they were trying to do to get the colors to blend properly in the image. But yeah, that is official art, but it has been, uh, digitally altered by me for the purposes of the thumbnail. Um, uh, Aikido, I think, uh, uh, I think same super strength as Captain America with Black Panther's speed. Uh, that part in Infinity Wars uh, where Black Panther and Captain are running during uh, the end fight in Wakanda. Yeah, that could be it. Like, I mean, those guys, those dudes could keep up with each other. Uh, Xavier Guzman back again. Well, to be, to be perfectly honest, in my humble opinion, and of course, without offending anyone who think differently from my viewpoint, and considering each and every one of y'all's valid opinions, with out of fence, I honestly believe that I completely forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> I was so invested in that comment when I started reading it. That is like the that is like the ultimate cock tease of comments. I had mental blue balls on that one for like a week. Or like, well, the week's not over yet, but like till today. <laughs> Save your Guzman, that was fantastic. <laughs> oh god alright Charlotte Marsh uh, and this one's a little bit of a long one here well that's super long alright Charlotte Mar uh, Charlotte Marsh uh, Black Panther clone except uh, even more super and less foreign um, probably likes white girls cause uh, the main one's for sure gonna be his ex that uh, he somehow uh, got dead, and the other guy's resurrected by making her the way she is. He blames himself, uh, <clears throat> and quite a bit 
is a tad jealous that she got powers uh, the easy way and that she chose to stay with the people who saved her uh, wants to do good and wants to do good, wants to do good and right things, but is constantly conflicted by the state of the world. Sadly, it seems that uh, the white people will once again be portrayed in a bad light because it seems that uh, though they may be heroes in name, they are a corporate sponsored government based uh, group and anybody who follows him knows how Eric feels about that. I'll think deeper into it later. If I get bored, uh, spit up more theories and conjecture. So, um, so Charlotte Marsh, some people kind of commented here. Um, he did, he or she, or I don't, I I don't know. It's a computer name. You could literally be using somebody's account, but the, the, but Charlotte, uh, actually said that, you know, figure of speech to be like a Black Panther clone. Um, I don't think Eric is going to, I, I, I think Eric is really going to try to make everybody have their own certain set of flaws. I don't think he's going to intentionally try to paint white people and black people in a certain light. Um, could he unintentionally? Oh, mm, no, I think he's, I don't think he cares about that. I mean, like, He's going to make a conflict between the characters to keep it interesting. I don't think he's going to make the white people bad. I think he is going to... It's like John Wick. Like, everybody's going to understand John Wick and understand, you know, a lot of the characters around him and how they all have their own motivations. I think it's going to be something like that, Charlotte. But that was a... That was like... You're, you're like, like, I'm giving you a specific fucking thing that I fucking think is going to happen. So... That could be interesting. Uh, Lucas Garrett, apparently my comments keep getting deleted, and I don't know why that is. Yes, I remember that, and I am actually going to pull up because he finally put his like his comment that he actually wanted to do. He says, my personal theory on Isom is that his name is connected to the uh, to Christian motives, uh, motifs. Isom is a village near uh, the river uh, I- I- Isla, uh, or in some translation, Isa means heard by God, and Yaira means to illuminate from Hebrew, um, which that would lend some credence to uh, my photon theory. Uh, as to his power set, Avery is an enhanced uh, uh, is an enhanced I- isometric body structure human with powers and abilities that are on par with the 1938 Superman. He can leap very high due to stored energy in his muscles and have uh, due to extensive isometric isometric conditioning he is the epitome uh, epitome of the reluctant warrior it might be part of his personality too a don't tread on me personality i can relate i'm glad you can see my comments now yeah youtube was being stupid there and i really like this comment because there you, you put a lot of, of thought into where um where isom's origin uh in eric's mind came from and where yaira came from um that could be Man, she's leaning more into the photon thing. I think I got that one right. Like, the, mm, I will have to see. Damn it. I just want to know. <laughs> oh, I just want to know. All right, moving on to uh, Ripiverse Accepts Theory Crafting. Uh, this is where I just talked about that for a little bit. And um, y'all didn't like this video, like, at all. Well, actually, these last few videos that I've done, boy, howdy. Uh Man, I think you guys are just like, yeah, you're 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 getting kind of old to drink with crazy. All right, <clears throat> all right. Giovanni, I think came in. He was commenting like crazy. So nope. Okay. All right, Giovanni uh, Tuminia, keep him theories coming. I think this is awesome. It's like trying to predict the outcome of a big game or a big fight uh, before it finally takes place. Thank you so much, Giovanni uh, Giovanni Tuminia. I appreciate uh, Igor Tixeria. Tykes, Tykesuria. This one, uh, this would, yeah, this would be crazy. Um, if this, I, and I th- think this is true based off of some research that my wife did and some research that I did. So we love your theories at the Ripiverse offices. Just saying, keep it going. So if people in the fucking Ripiverse offices are seeing these, what the fuck? That, like, if this, is, if that's fucking true, holy shit. Yeah, so like if that's if that's fucking true, that would be fucking insane. Like I, I genuinely don't know what what how to wow. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 
Um, <clears throat> Gary Major, totally agree with you about Static Shock and Batman Beyond. They were great shows. Static Shock was a great example of diversity done right. Uh, Static Shock, well, I think, was uh, Gary Major. I think Static Shock was just um, a, a great American show done right. Not even just diversity. Just here are people living in a city. And that, that's it. Like, that's what cities look like. Like, that's awesome. Um, so, yeah. Uh, DGC, my personal hope is that uh, <laughs> is that Ripper, he always says it, man. He comes in at Ripper with a hard R. I don't know. Do you intend to, are, are you doing something there, DGC? My personal hope is that Ripper has a, a variety of ways people gain their powers. Some can get them from military military exper experiments, others uh, from some kind of incident, and others from an accident of some kind. Others may be aliens and others born with abilities. If he's looking to create a whole universe and plans to bring in other writers to write new books and make new characters, then this gives those writers uh, the greatest amount of uh, freedom to make up a character the way uh, that they would like. Yes, the character needs to fit within the... Uh, the verse that he has set up and as you expand the world building a certain consistency you will need to be maintained a different uh, potential origins will make uh, and different potential origins will make that more complicated um, though it can and has been done making all powered beings having one event gives them their uh, having one event that gives them their powers limits future growth though how are you going to introduce new characters five years later if it's one event uh, that gave everyone their powers um, where uh, where were they for the past five to ten years or if we see the Ripperverse reach Marvel and DC longevity 60. Uh, years down the road. Uh, unless you go the mutant route where their powers are just evolutionary, uh, the new characters become less plausible the older your universe gets. Keep it varied for future growth. Yeah, um, I think that that's a thing. Um, one of the things that I think could be done really, really well. Man, my mic is so damn hot today. I am trying to adjust that on the fly. It's not working. Um, I think that having a, a, the varied power set uh, makes the most sense. I think... Uh, there could be one event that gave a lot of people their powers, but I think that... So I think that Isom got his powers from a specific event that happens where, like, like a Bang Baby situation. However, you can also have uh, mut uh, mutagenic um, uh, evolutionary um, heroes still. It's not like you can't have a Bang event that happens and gives people their power, a large section of people their powers, uh, and then have mutagenic things that kind of uh, spawn out from that, or uh, you can't introduce military experimentation. Um, yeah, you, you can do all of it. I think you can do all of it, for sure. Um, <clears throat> great video. You might be onto something with the origins theory. Thank you, Lucas Garrett. I appreciate you. Church versus the world. My first Green Lantern was Hal Jordan. Uh, in the Green Lantern, Green Arrow story arc in the 90s. And Kyle Rayner, I did... F uh, I, uh, yeah, uh, and Kyle Rayner, I didn't find Jon Stewart until I was almost a man. I missed the old cartoons because my childhood wasn't fair. Yeah. Um, Evan writes, it's not Hal or John. Kyle is where it's at. Yeah, I forgot about Kyle Rayner. I, I don't know. Like, I felt... Like, they went a little over the top with Kyle Rayner, eventually. Like, I just, I know a lot of people like his personality, but I I don't know. I don't know. Wasn't, wasn't it Kyle that got, like, all the rings and became the White Lantern? Like, I felt that that was a little, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I didn't feel like that was really earned. Uh, little movie perp, you bastard. Your nerd shelf leaves a lot to be desired. Work on it. I got sassy with you. I did. Actually, I got less sassy, and I was just like, no, like, uh, no, like, this is the wall that I have, man. I, I mean, I don't really need to work on it. Like, as I, as, you know, my wife, you know, she's got stuff up here, too. Like, this is for my wife. My wife custom made uh, the Get a Life and the Grow Up banners here. She custom made the Zelda banner up here. Um, there's a Gargoyles up there. We have some custom paintings. I have a Captain Morgan Spice Rum like old tray over here. Like no, the wall has stuff on it that means something. Um, and I don't really feel like I'm not going to go out and just spend a bunch of money 
on crap that doesn't mean anything. Like all of this stuff up here means something. I mean, I, I love Halo and I wanted something in Halo to be represented up here. My deck boxes that my buddy and I built and we still play. Like this is a Ghost of Tsushima mask here that my buddy knew how much I loved Ghost of Tsushima. And so he got that for me. My wife found a little Hot Wheels Gambit card because she knows that Gambit's one of my favorites uh, X-Men. The Mask of the Red Death uh, from Edgar Allan Poe is probably, well, it's not quite my favorite story that Edgar Allan Poe has ever done, but, you know, I love Edgar Allan Poe as a writer. I would say my favorite's probably uh, A Telltale Heart, you know. I mean, the obviously, this is not a, th this isn't like a, a, a super good one, but, you know, and Andriel, you know, from The Lord of the Rings because of how amazing it is. This is a... Uh, uh, you know, a cheaper, you know, rosary from the Boondock Saints. Like, everything I have up here on this wall, you know, has impacted me in a certain way. And um, I know a lot of people are like, no, 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 like, you like you, you have to, have, like, like nervously, like, put everything up on the nerd wall. And, ah, man, that ain't me. If it means something to me, it gets put up there. If it doesn't mean anything to me, I'm not going to put just random shit up there for the sake of random shit being on the wall. Like... You know, it's like, yeah, I'm enjoying Hero, My Hero Academia right now, but, like, am I that into it? No. Like, Attack on Titan? Um, yeah, there's probably going to be some Attack on Titan shit up here eventually because that show just, that show changed my concept of anime. But, Lil Movie Perp, thank you for commenting, man, and I do appreciate it. Thank you for checking out the videos. <clears throat> uh, Faux Peasy! Shout out. Thank you, Faux Peasy. <laughs> I don't know how to respond to that one. Um, all right. Moving on to Darren Fontano and Isom's friendship theory crafting. All right. Sunny Kim is back again. I really like your theory. I was thinking there wasn't anything uh, that drove them apart. I think they just went their separate ways at some point. Uh, like happens in life, and they haven't even talked for a long time. I ex I expect Fontaine to be surprised to see Avery since uh, he has been laying low on his farm. Yeah, I think that could totally be a thing. Ram, love watching these theory videos, man. Thank you so much, dude. I appreciate it. Uh, Evan writes, we all know Fontaine is the good capitalist guy who works completely within the law, and Isom is, <laughs> is a vigilante supervillain out to cause trouble in the city. Yeah, you're right. Like, yeah, that's obviously what's going on here. 100%. We obviously know that the law is just trying to keep the good capitalist down. And Fontano is just trying to be a good capitalist. Evan writes, I think, I think, you, I think you got it. I think you busted it there. Sonny Kim back again. Talk about whatever you want. Make sure you keep it fun for you. I'm down for some anime. Thank you. And I actually did an anime video, and that one was really fun to talk about. 11th Tribe. How would you compare the Belgian ale you drank uh, to Blue Moon? I love Blue Moon. Um, actually. Okay. Uh, yeah, so this is the one he's referring to. And I have literally only drank uh, one uh, since um, since that video. These, are, these things are fucking strong. These are like, I drank one last night and while well, we were streaming. And then after the stream, I was just like, holy fuck. Um, cause 10% is ridiculous. Uh, no, I think that, and I, I gave a, a quick rundown. I actually had blue moon cause you said blue moon and I was like, Oh, I want blue moon. So I actually went and I've had blue moon this week a lot cause, uh, because of this comment cause blue moon's really good. No. So blue moon is a citrus based Belgian style, um, ale. And, uh, being that it is citrus based, you're going to have a lot more of, of the acidic and sweet notes in there. This one is not a citrus based, um, uh, uh, golden ale. This is uh, this is back pocket brewing, by the way, and this is murder horn. This is um, this is going to be more along the lines of your traditional golden ale. However, I uh, and because I I had time to think about it, and I sipped on that first one after uh, I got done with that video, and I had one last night. I've time, had time to think about it. I think that their balance is a little off with this one because. Out of all of the beers that I have had, the one thing that I've, I've consistently seen, especially once you start climbing into that alcohol by volume, once you cross that 7.5% like threshold, 
you really have to start thinking about flavor balancing, right? Now, this could be because I'm drinking it out of a can and not actually drinking it, um, and not actually drinking it um, uh, out of a glass, right? Uh, I haven't poured one in a glass. Maybe I'll have to do that a little later today, um, you know, when it turns into drinking hour because I'm not doing that. But this one here is, again, your traditional style. It's not going to have those citrusy notes, and it's it definitely packs a lot more punch than your Blue Moon will. So this one, and again, I think they were off on the flavor balance because, again, they crossed that 7.5% alcohol by volume threshold, and you really have to start thinking about how the flavors and the notes are going to compare and contrast with each other with the strength of the alcohol at that point. And so uh, although this is really good, I said I would drink both of them all night. I would probably take Blue Moon over this just because I think they had some flavor balancing issues um, with the percentage of the alcohol by volume. That is that's that is my complete review uh, of this beer now, 11th Tribes. But yeah, if you, uh, it's still very good. It's still very good. Uh, I would take Blue Moon over it, though, because the flavor I feel is, uh, again, again, you shouldn't, when you're, when you're drinking craft beer like this, you shouldn't taste the alcohol. It shouldn't at all. And it's not that bad. It's not that bad. I've had some where you're just like, oh, it's turpentine. Like, no, it's not that bad. But yeah, this is, uh, that would be my review. So, but give it a shot. It's a uh, Back Pocket Brewing uh, Murder Horn Golden Ale. It's, it's pretty good. It's uh, made in Iowa. My wife is amazing. She bought me this little micro fridge. Oh, I love that woman so much. She's like, no. She's like, I know you like your videos and stuff, and you need to have cold beer down there, so I bought you a little micro fridge to put, and it holds like tw a 12-pack. I love this woman. So, all right. <clears throat> Man. Whew. Voice. Uh, Giovanni Tuminia. Most likely Fontano will offer Eric a job. Eric or Isom or Avery? I don't know what you meant there. <laughs> I was like, I thought I read it. I think I read this comment at like four o'clock in the morning though. So church versus the world, bro. That algorithm is a pain in the ass. I have subbed and all kinds of stuff, but none of your other videos have popped up. I'll be sure and check those out tonight. Thank you so much. Church versus the world. Yeah, that, that's one of the things is like, um, you know, when everybody's popping off with all the uh, the Ripperverse stuff, like it's, uh, uh, you know, the algorithm pushes it. But when you get new subscribers, if those new subscribers aren't actively engaged in watching the topic that you are talking about, YouTube will not let your subscribers who have subscribed to you know that your videos are going out. That's why I don't I don't even deal with the homepage of YouTube anymore because I'm not subscribed to any of that crap. If I want to know something, I go to my subscription box and I scroll and I, sometimes I will individually check out from the um uh, from the creators that I subscribe to because they'll get a little blue light there showing that there's new content that you haven't watched. That's how I watch all the people that I do. I don't deal with the homepage. I don't wait for notifications. I actively go into my sub, my sub area that I subscribe to every, and, and I watch. And like I said, sometimes I'm like, hmm, I, this person didn't upload or I don't see it because there's a lot of people that I've subscribed to. So I will specifically go to that page. So Maybe, yeah, if YouTube won't show that out and if you guys like what I'm doing enough, maybe, yeah, just go to your subscription box and click a drink with crazy. We should be one of the first channels like in your sub box on YouTube. Which right there, bright green icon, just click that. Uh, every day about 7.30, 8 o'clock is usually when I get videos out. Uh, at PM, by the way. <clears throat> All right, I used to hate anime, so here's my top five. Uh, this video did terribly. Oh, you guys didn't like this video at all. But some new people commented that I'm not used to seeing. Kim J. Those are some good lists. I'm currently watching um, Nichujo uh, and The Way of the House Husband. They are pretty funny. Uh, have you ever tried uh, Franc uh, Franco-Belgian comics? Uh, I read some pretty good, one, uh, good ones. Some of them are being translated to English. Uh, the ones that aren't translated, I do it myself. It makes reading it more fun. I have not, Kim J. No, and uh, thank you so much for checking out the channel. Um, 
All right, let's go here. All right, Toxic Crusader. Princess Mononoke is one of my faves, too. Uh, it's just refreshing seeing how a show with environmentalist themes that doesn't show... Uh, nature as all benevolent and shows both sides uh, viewpoint that being said if your kids ever want to watch something uh try anything made by studio uh ghibli um <clears throat> they made princess mononoke and have made uh other good movies uh on par with it the three that come to mind are spirited away howl's moving castle and kiki's delivery service uh they definitely give some classic disney vibes great vid by the way well thank you so much toxic crusader and actually we own and i told you this uh my, one of my wife's favorite movies growing up was kiki's delivery service and i'd never watched it and she showed it to me um i finally was able to show my family princess mononoke uh, a few weeks ago and that was one of those like like pillars for me is like that was one of the animes that like i was like okay not all anime is trash because this thing specifically exists. So, like, I can't say all anime is trash because obviously I have evidence to the contrary. Tim Allen is back. He said Star Blazers, Battle of the Planets, Voltron, original, and the Space Expo crew, Gundam Wing, and Gundam Zero Zero. So hated Dragon Ball Z in any form. You were... Had mm, I was at like half chub there, and then you said that last thing, Tim Allen. Talk about my Dragon Ball Z like that, but yeah, no, uh, Gundam, Gundam Wing, um, OG Voltron. I liked the Netflix Voltron, I know a lot of people didn't, but I thought it was cool. I, I hated the fucking ending, the ending was fucking stupid, that was fucking horrible. Kyle Phillips, holy shit, 20 minutes. Sorry, but I had to skim through <laughs> through it. Uh, Paranoia Agent, uh, Noyan, Serial Experiments Lane, uh, Mushishi, and of course, Cowboy Bebop have left the biggest impact on me after watching them. Have you seen Akira? I have not seen Akira. I've heard about it. Uh, I tried watching Cowboy Bebop. I just, it didn't strike a chord. Music is baller. Music, mm. As a musician, hearing that, ooh. Ooh, that music was really good. But the rest of the show just didn't, uh... I don't know it uh maybe if there was more of it or if they were like announced that they're going to come out with a season two uh like the original creators and they were going to like do like the season two that nobody ever got i'd probably start watching it again because when i found out it was like 20 episodes and then done i was like okay this story i thought it was going to get way and it just yeah it's it stopped so um no yeah those are uh i will have to check some of those out um Hey, we all make mistakes. Uh, it takes a big man to admit it. Uh, that is Pastor Cody Mitchell. Um, <laughs> um, and he and I actually had a uh, a very um, a very good exchange back here, uh, and it, for Pastor Cody Mitchell, and it was very very long. So, yeah, uh, and he went and listed out a ton of different animes. So that was yeah, that was there. Uh, great video, man. Recommendations from me. Galgo 13, Black Lagoon, Full Metal Panic, uh, Record of Grand Crest War, Spriggan, Ova, and Netflix series, uh, Kangang Ashura, and Dr. Stone. Uh, thank you so much, Lucas Garrett. I will have to check all those out. Uh, Big Doc, Robotech, Ninja Scroll, Samurai Shampoo, and The Professional. Charlotte Marsh is back again. I still don't like anime, but at least most of it isn't woke. Um, yeah, anime, they kind of... The things that they have been doing in anime for fucking ever are just like... If they tried to make it woke at all, people would be like, but you're stupid because like we've literally... like you, No, you're stupid. Uh, Xavier Guzman, Invincible and Dragon Ball Z for me. Call me a basic bitch, but I don't care. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think Invincible, I mean, there might be an anime called Invincible, but I think Invincible was done by a Western studio. Um, but Invincible was great. Yeah, no, um, I don't care. Yeah, I like Dragon Ball Z as well and Dragon Ball Super. Uh, I got my wife into them. All right. And the last video here, the Ripperverse story themes, theory crafting. I totally clicked on the wrong thing. What the fuck? Hey, there we go. Toxic Crusader from one hour ago. Personally, I would love to see Isom represent the theme of doing things the right way, not the easy way. Uh, much like what happens in Superman vs. the Elite, that was fucking fantastic. Like, the, mm, yeah, I saw the animated, uh, DC animated movies are fucking fantastic. I watched that. That was so great. I think bought that one? Or did I rent it? 
I don't know. I have to go tear through all my DC animated movies. I've got like 15 of them or something like that. I've got a lot. Um, uh, much like what happened in Superman versus the Elite and uh, Superman Kingdom Come, where essentially new heroes come and believe that Superman's methods of never killing is obsolete and naive, if Isom stands for real justice, he will be an instant favorite of mine. Um, Toxic Crusader, I am going to categorically disagree with you on the killing thing. I think that there are some people who should be put to death, but that is... That that's a longer conversation to have. I think that the reason it works for Superman is because he is so unbelievably, I mean, he is God tier powerful. That's why it works for him. But for a guy like Batman, that's why it doesn't work for Batman. That's why Batman city just kept getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse, and worse is because he was a half measure. Whereas Superman, he doesn't have to kill because he is so damn powerful. People are just like, like, what's the fucking point? Right? Like, what's the point? But when it comes to Batman, people are like, oh yeah, no, we can do just enough shit to get away with like half of what we need to. And then Batman will step in and he'll kind of beat us sometimes, but like, he's not that he's just a guy. Right. And I, so yeah, I think in Batman's case, Batman needs to murder the shit out of people and Superman doesn't. And for very different reasons, uh, Giovanni Tuminia, to be quite honest, I'm, I'm, <clears throat> I'm more sure of the seams I don't want to see than with the ones I'd like to see. Uh, I don't want to see happy, sappy love stories becoming the core of the whole thing. Characters finding out about their sexual identity in between fights to the death. Black people talking about racial oppression at the most awkward times. Snarky remarks about the Christian faith or God. Derogatory remarks about the founding fathers and the Republic. Other than that, I'm good. <laughs> so yeah, that was very well thought out, Giovanni. I, I agree. Lucas Garrett, as always, great video, Royce. <laughs> Thank you, sir. And I would... Uh, I would say be careful of what you wish for when it comes uh, to <clears throat> the motives presented in the Ripperverse. Uh, you might. No, you will be getting them. Eric is fully aware of the void and good storytelling left by Marvel and DC Comics, and he seeks to fill that void. Um, as for what I want, I want to see uh, consequences matter again in the superhero comic book universe. If someone dies, they stay dead, and the impact... And the impact, positive or negative, is felt for many years to come. I want actions and decisions to matter again, and I suspect Eric does as well. Loyalty matters. That being said, be careful who you are loyal to, because whether they are <clears throat> whether they be superhuman hu or human, in the end, they are humans, and humans are flawed creatures. Well, I'm off to work the nights the night shift yet again. Have a great weekend, buddy, and thank you for all the shoutouts in your previous videos. Keep the content coming. Take care. Hey. <laughs> Man, I'm just trying to shout everybody out, Lucas. I'm trying to do uh, some of your stuff. Like you, uh, the the way that you word things seems to click like the Lego pieces in my mind work. And I think that that's why, I think it's just how your phraseology that you use just resonates with how I think I like to phrase things, at least when I'm not drinking a, 10% alcohol by volume beer. And I think that that's why yours stick out in my head a little bit more. Not to dog on anybody else. I just think that that's just one of those things. Uh, hopefully your night shift went well, man. Michael Vera. Wow, Royce, you got me pumped for the Ripaverse and for life. That was really motivating. I don't know what to say to that. Thank you. Um, I am using the I am using these videos to talk about the things that I feel are important in life. Yes, I am excited for the Ripperverse. Yes, I want to see great success for everybody who's talking about this stuff. However, the reason that I started a channel and the reason that I'm doing what I'm doing is because I believe that there are things that need to be talked about. And I am simply using the topics that are in front of me uh, and using those as springboards. So you guys can see the diving board. And then obviously I jump off into my use those to springboard off into the greater things that I feel are relevant to the world. That's no bullshit. That's what I'm doing here on the channel. I am taking the things that I like back here on the wall or that we think about, and I am using them to disguise my real motive of talking about the problems in the world and how I think we can, uh, what folk, what focus we need to be directed towards. So no bullshit. That's my motive here. Not even going to, that, that's it. That's what I'm going for. Sonny Kim, that Doc Holiday line is one of my favorite ever. Yeah, the uh, 
Well, I've got a lot of friends. You know, Wyatt Earp is my friend. Shit, I got a lot of friends. I don't. That is the best line that Doc Holliday said in that entire fucking movie. Period. Uh, Super Neil comments, you echo my thoughts, Royce. <laughs> Thank you so much. And a lot of people are using my name now. I appreciate it. Uh, uh, not Morelnum. I like what you did there. Not my real name. Said, and the haters say no one is talking about the characters of the book itself. Royce has put more work into fan theories for an unrealized comic book than DC or Marvel put into their comics or movies. That's a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for recognizing I'm, I'm doing my best here, not Morelnum. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, Super Neo Comics back again. What should I call you? A drink with Crazy? Crazy? <laughs> and I just said, no, you can, uh, well, you can call me Crazy or you can call me, uh, you can call me Royce because uh, that is my name. So, yeah, you guys can call me that. Uh, Two-way Oregon boy. Don't get ahead of yourself, bro. Uh, I just said, you know, my wife says that same thing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, two A organ. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what he's. Like, he's we were talking about the themes of the Ripperverse and like what I wanted to see. Um, and I'm not sure what he was. Two A organ boy hit me up and let me clear. Let me know exactly what you meant on that. Super Neil Comics. Uh, it is not fair that there are no comments here other than mine. This was one of the first comments that he put up like 17 hours ago, and I, all I said was I think it's more than fair because. Every comment that you guys come at me with is important and makes me feel like what I'm doing here is bigger than it's bigger than just me. And yeah, so no, don't never feel that it's not fair that there are no other comments here and certainly don't feel bad for me because you commented. You are the one here, all of you, every one of you, all of you as individuals, right? We can gather as a fantastic community of individuals um, and strike that balance and be badasses to the world and show the world what we have to offer. But yeah, because I have decided to conquer who I am. Let me, I'll, I'll leave it off with this. Let's end with this one. I hate the term that people use. I want to wake up as a better man. I hate that term. Because it's stupid. Nobody that I know has ever worked on themselves while they sleep. And it's a cop-out. And nobody thinks about it. It's just a little phrase that people say. And I, but I did. I did think about it. And I fucking hated it. And so I altered it. I said, no. My goal is to go to bed a better man than I woke up as. If I am lucky, that happens maybe twice a year. Maybe. If I'm lucky... Because it turns out self-improvement's a bitch. Self-understanding is even more of a bitch. And then on top of that, acting on those things and putting yourself in a position to actually move in the direction that you need to move to, or move away from, or move to, finding which flaws can actually be beneficial to you because you're just using them the improper way and finding those things that you think are beneficial to you are actually flaws and then finding the opposites. No, I'd rather go to bed a better man than I woke up as. And a lot of times, most of the time, it doesn't happen. But occasionally it does. And that's why I am an entirely different person today than I was two years ago when I made this channel, four years ago, 12 years ago when I met my wife. I wouldn't even recognize who I was back then. Well, actually, I don't, I can't even remember that. It, they feel like different people. So yeah, I'll leave it off there. But no, Super Neil comments, Super Neil comics. No, it was totally fair because you were here and you were the first to comment and you were the one excited about it. And a lot of people came and joined you. So until next ga time, guys, this has been reading your comments. And uh, I'm going to finish my coffee here and uh, get this rendered up. And I hope you guys enjoy. I will see you in the future. See you on the next videos. Have a good one, guys. Thank you for watching A Drink With Crazy. 
If you liked the conversation, make sure to click here to see more.